guys, welcome back to the channel. Of course, you can have really, really sorry for adding the previous story due to certain medical reasons. Without wasting time, let's continue. So, welcome back to the series of a Python. So, we are going to study Python here from the scratch. In our previous videos, we have seen about the flavors of Python, the introduction to the Python, how we are going to download any editor that we are, where we are going to work with the Python and other things. In our today's video we are going to see the versions of a python so first version that was introduced in the year january of 1994 and the second version of python was introduced in october 2000 third version of python was introduced in 2008 of december and here is a small note python 3 won't provide backward compatibility to python 2 that is, there is no guarantee that Python 2 programs are going to will run on Python 3. This is one note that you have to keep in your mind. The next is the current version. What are the current versions of Python that is going that is running? The current version of Python is 3.6.1 that is going on, and Python 2.7.1. 3 it can also be run on the devices. So next we are going to see about certain identifiers in Python. Next we are going to see about the identifiers in Python. So what are these identifiers? A name in a Python is called as an identifier. So if you are going to simply give a name for a variable, then that will be known as an identifier. So it can be class name or a function name or module name or any other variable name so that will be known as an identifier in python next example you can see here a is equals to 10 wherein a is a variable and this variable name is itself known as an identifier so now this we are going to call it as identifier there are certain uh, rules to define the identifiers in python that is what are the rules let us see the first rule is the only allowed characters in python are the first one is alphabet symbols that is you can have the alphabets is either from capital a to capital z or you can have it with small a to small z so these are the alphabetic symbols that you can use for the identifiers next are digits that is the digits from 0 to 9 can be used here. Then next you have underscore symbol. That is underscore symbol is like this. Like if you are having any name here from A underscore Z. So this is underscore and wherever you are going to add it in the middle that is hyphen. Please remember this difference. The next you have is by mistake if you are using any other symbol like dollar then there will be some syntax errors what do you mean by this particular line here now for example if you are going to use any of the dollar symbols say for example if you have cash cash is equals to 100 so this is a right whereas if you are going to use ca yes h that is if you're going to use any of the dollar symbols then this identifier will be a wrong identifier so this was the first rule that was there, that is there in python so let us see about the second rule the second rule is identifiers should not start with a digit for example if you're going to write one two three total is equals to two thousand and if you are going to write something like this, total 1, 2, 3 is equal to 2000. Now we can see this also is an identifier. This also is an identifier. But if it is going to start anything with the digits, then this is a wrong identifier. This is not the right way to write the identifier. Whereas if you are going to start something with an alphabet and then you are going to continue it with the words, then this is a right one or if you are going to write something like this total underscore one two three is equals to two thousand then this is also fine because here you have an underscore and here you have total even if you are going to write it something like this total dollar one two three then this is also a wrong identifier 
because you cannot use a dollar symbol or any other symbol except for underscore this was the second rule the third rule identifiers are case sensitive so what do you mean by this case sensitive the python itself is a case sensitive language so whatever you are going to use it is going to give you the same thing for example if i'm going to tell you for case sensitive for case sensitive i'm just showing you the content here if you are going to give something like a total is equals to 99 and here you have total is equals to 290 since if, if you want to print this particular total then you have to give the same total tal which you have used here if you are going to give anything capital then it is not going to give you the answer so if, for example if i am going to write a print total then it is going to print me the value 99 if i am going to tell it to print total then it is going to print me 290 for example if i give completely capital then it is going to give you an error saying that this particular thing is not present this is how you are going to write these are the rules which you have to use for your identifiers and also one more thing you cannot use any of the reserved keywords which are present in python all right now let us add certain questions here and you can answer about these questions in the comment section the first one is which of the following are valid python identifiers the first one is one two three total second one is total one two three oh there is no space total one two three the next one is java to share third one is c cash with a dollar symbol underscore abc underscore abc then you have a depth you have if so these are certain seven seven questions which are there here you can just give the right or a wrong mark in the comment section or you can also add true or false before these particular lines in the comment section so let us see how many of you are going to get it right and we'll solve this in the next video the next one next we have certain reserve keywords so previously i just told you that the reserve keywords cannot be used as identifiers so which are all the reserved keywords that are present the first one is a true false none the second set is and or and not third set is if lf else while for break continue return in yield fifth set try accept finally raise assert sixth set you have import import for as class def pass global non local lambda del with so these are certain 23 reserved keywords which cannot be used as identifiers in your programs. So please keep these in mind. And let me tell you one note here. All the reserved words in Python contain only alphabet symbols and they do not have any of the digits present with them. Except for the following three reserved words, all contain only lower case alphabet symbols only the first only this first set that is there this can also be written as like this true false none so this can be written in the camel case whereas all the other reserved keywords that are there all these will be written in the lower case format itself now if you want to see any of the reserved like how many reserved keywords are there in python then you can easily see them in your visual studio code as studio as well let us see that first and let's get to the next content later
So this is how you are going to write a program to list all the keywords in Java. So let us check whether the program is going to work fine. Python first dot py and enter. And here are all the keywords or reserved keywords that are there in Python. So you can see false, none, and true are in the camel case, and rest all are in the small case. Next, we have about the data types. Now, what are these data types? Data type present represents the type of data present inside a particular variable. We know what is an identifier. So a name given to a particular variable is identifier. Now, what is a variable? The container in which you are going to store a certain value, this container is known as a variable. For example, for this container, you can give the value as A or B or C or anything of you want according to the rules that are being described in this particular video previously. So this is a variable. Now, in Python, we are not required to specify the type explicitly. For example, in if you have learned about Java, C or C++, you might have seen a writing int, char, double, boolean, float, these values previously to your identifiers. But here in Python, it is not required to specify them explicitly. Next, based on the values provided, the type will be assigned automatically. Hence, Python is dynamically typed language. This is a very, very, very important line which has been described here. For your placement purposes, then at this point is a value adding point here. Always remember, this question can be asked in your interviews. That is, why is Python called as dynamically typed language? Because the values for the variables can, the values that will be provided to the variables are not required to assign explicitly, but they will be assigned automatically. This is the main reason why Python is called as a dynamically typed language. If you're using, if you're seeing this video for your placement purposes or for your study purpose, then this is a really very, very, very important point to be noted. Python contains the following inbuilt data types. The first one is int, float, complex, bool, str that is a string, bytes, byte array, range, list, tuple, set, frozen set, dict, and none. So these are the 14 built-in data types that do not require any explicit any values to specify explicitly these will be automatically assigned now for example if you consider here now say for example you have a is equals to 10 and b is equals to 10 so now what happens over here you have a two variables but you have only one value so a and b both the variables that are there they are pointing to the same value here that is int 10 10 that is an integer type okay and for example if you have a is equals to 20 and a is equals to 10 so in this case here you have only one container or you have only one variable for which you have two kinds of values that is one is 20 and one is 10 to specify these this python has many inbuilt functions which are present here so let us see them one by one the first inbuilt function in python is a type function this type it is used to check the type of variable that is present in your container say for example if it is an integer type if it is a floating type if it is a character type 
that can be identified by using this type function. Second one is id function. This id function is to get the address of that particular object or in which address this particular object is being located that can be understood with the help of this id function. The third one is print function. This is going to print whatever value that you have just like your system.out.println in your Java or you can say printf in your scan uh, in your C and data structures. And one more thing that you need to remember in Python, every single thing is an object. This is all for today's video. In our next video, let us see all these inbuilt functions and also about the data types in detail in the next video. Till then, keep learning and stay tuned. Bye-bye.